Hello friends, now we will see the sampling theorem for Lopas signals. Here, if we consider the information signal x of t, it is also called as a continuous time signal. Now, another signal are nothing but the impulse samples are taken. We can say that it is a unit impulse train of signal. So, it is indicated by S of t equal to delta times t minus n times ts. So, third one is we will try to sample down the continuous time signal by taking a sample at regular interval with the help of the impulse train. Now here the samples will be look like. The amplitude of the samples will try to attain the maximum value of that continuous time signal and minimum value of the continuous time signal. Here it will try to track down the signal and it is called a sampled signal and which is integrated by h delta of t. Now let us see the mathematical relation involved in this one that there are certain states how we can get the sampling theorem for Lopas signal. First one is represent the sampling function s of t mathematically. Now here mathematically if we try to define s of t it will be delta times t plus 2 times t s plus delta times t plus t s. So the decreasing value of the time and here delta of t plus another side delta plus t minus t s plus t minus delta times t minus 2 times t s and so on. That means both sides the signal it is spread. So we can have the S of t relation equal to summation of minus infinity to infinity delta times t minus n times t s. Now the second step that is represent the sampling function x delta of t mathematically. So x delta of t can be represented at summation of n equal to minus infinity to infinity x times n times t s into delta times t minus n times t s. Now the third step is getting the Fourier transform of sample signal. Now this time signal it is converted into the frequency domain x delta of f it is nothing but a sample version. It is f h times summation of n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of f minus n times f s. Now fourth step it is prove that the sample signal x delta of t completely represent x of t or continuous time signal or not. We can check it by defining the function x of f equal to 1 upon 2w that is over entire bandwidth we will try to check summation of n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n divided by 2w e raised to power j pi fn divided by w. Now the next step it is representing x of t as a sum of sin function. So sin function it is nothing but a symmetrical function. So it is represented by x of t equal to summation of n equal to minus infinity to infinity again x of n divided by 2w sin function of 2w t minus n. Now the graphical representation of interpolation process is need to be carried out. So here graphically we will try to see that the sample signal, sample signal x delta of t and after taking the number of the sample the reconstructed signal x of t we can obtain. Now recovery of x of t using ideal low pass filter. Now how we can get? Now we are using here applying the sequence of the samples to the reconstruction filter which is basically a low pass filter kind and we can retrieve analog signal x of t. Now here the signal spectra we can 
loop. So X of A in nothing but the original information signal in the frequency domain. So minus W2, W is the bandwidth spread. Now here, minus W2, W again, and the other one, that is the low pass filtering, minus FS plus W, considering the center frequency of minus FS. So both side of that minus FS and plus FS, the corresponding bandwidth will be either increased to the positive side or the decrease into the lower side, giving the output at the reconstruction filter. Here the reconstruction filter we can get with respect to the reference value that minus fs plus w and fs plus w. So finally at the output of the low pass filter we will get the original x of t signal as the record one which is spread in between minus w2 plus w. Thus in this way the sampling theorem for the low pass signal can be explained. Thank you for watching.